All right, this is the last part. Thank you again for bearing with me as I try out these many but shorter videos. I hope you enjoy and I'm looking forward to your feedback. I am ready to start checking everything over. What I realized just a moment ago was I tried to push these together and I noticed this bolt was moving. So the first thing I need to do is go through and make all, make, go through and make sure all of these are connected. I already tested the voltage of the balance leads. I know the balance leads are wired properly. So now it's just the main pack. I'm not gonna do it super tight because I'm not putting any high loads on it. All right, so BMS2 on the left, BMS1 on the right. I have main pack negative going into B minus. I have P minus coming out and going to the smart shunt. On the other side, I'm going to B minus, P minus coming out to the two battery side of the smart shunt. So the negative seem okay, positive. I've got the positive going to the switch, the switch is off. I've got the other positive coming into the switch and the switch is off. The screens, the ground of the screen is going to main pack negative. Wait, wasn't I going to do that down here? I was going to put that on the output side of the BMS. Does it matter? Not at this stage. I don't think it will. Positive goes to the output side of this. Uh, no, it goes to the input side of the switch. All right, so that is a disgusting mess, but I think ready to fire up. Oh, what a cluster that is. Battery plus goes to positive. Battery negative goes to negative. Negative goes to, oh, got to tighten that up. I love checks. I find all my mistakes this way. And this is exactly why I didn't want to do this last night. I guess the last thing to do is connect these. You know what, to limit my exposure, I think I'm going to pull the positive out of here just so that if something catastrophic happens, this is one less thing that could be damaged. Ah. Stop being chicken. Do the deed. Do the deed. If all hell goes, breaks loose, there's my feasible link. I really hope I don't have to cut those. But if I do, it won't be with a chisel this time. Fuck, I'm nervous. I, I'm nervous mostly because of what just happened the other day. I gotta get over it. The longer I wait, the longer the nerves have to sit in. Oh, and the screen's already booting up. And obviously, no buck converter this time because the screens will work at 12 and 24 volts. All right, so that is up. BMS should be up. Let me turn on my phone and I'll start a screen record. I'm gonna go down to the BMS. It's probably gonna see at least some of the BMSs in the basement. It's booting and there it is. Alarm, cell count not equal. Okay, that's expected because it's thinking there's eight. So let's go into settings. Okay, let's change this to four. We're going to set the battery capacity to 280. <laughs> the uh, state of charge dropped. Calibrated voltage. Ah, it won't be perfect, but it says using the AC only clamp amp meter as my stand. Oh, there it is, it's right there. This is my voltage standard, standard bearer. I'll calibrate the voltage. At the base of the ring terminal is Nothing. Oh, fuck, because I'd have in amps. Oh, go me. It is 13.31 and it's reading 13.39. So we're gonna change that to 31. Cell over voltage protection. Oh, we gotta change this to life po four. There we go. It obviously defaulted to something else. It's seeing the temperature. Okay, I have to take the earrings out. For some reason, they're bothering my ears today. I think we set the over voltage protection to four or five. I'm not doing a capacity test on these because these are from the first 48 volt and I've already capacity tested them. Under voltage protection is set to 2.65. That's probably a bit, oh, return. Over voltage, oh, damn it, come on, Maddie. 3.55, return is 3.45. Under voltage protection is 2.6. Set that to 2.65 for recovery. Power off voltage is 2.5, that's fine. Start balance, we're gonna to change to 3.4 as per Andy's suggestion. Max continuous charge current. It should be able to go all the way to 280 or 200 amps. This is a 200 amp continuous BMS. So I should be able to set this to 200 amp. All right. Oh, uh, temperatures. 
charge under temperature protection. Let's set that to three deg degrees. Sending failure. Oh, because the return is too high. We'll set the return to five. We'll set the shutdown to three. And again, I set it to three instead of zero because it's possible that the temperature sensors will be cooling down later than other parts of the cell. So it just gives me a little bit of a buffer. That is set. No, wait, why is the cell count back to eight? When I switched to life before, oh, when I switched to life before it reset everything. God damn it. Wait, and then it just jumped to 78% charge. It doesn't matter. This thing is almost full. It's only been self discharging for a few months. What the hell does this thing know? But this means I have to set this back to 13.3. Oh man, it, un it undid everything. Okay, we have to set the chemistry, then set everything else. Now I go back to status, things look good. So that pack's alive. Let's do this one. You know what? I think I'm gonna turn this on and that should power up the servo. Okay, fingers crossed. Oops, what did I just do? Ah. Oh, right, I wanted to rename this as well. Modify name, and this is going to become 12VBMS. I did 02. I don't know why I did 02, but there you go. Oh, I have to quit the app. I forgot. There we go. All right, yo. Let's turn this on. That should boot up here in a second. Hello? Do I not have voltage? Oh, uh, balance on. Charge off. Oh, discharge is off. Okay, go to control. Okay, now this stuff should start coming alive. I should see voltage. 13.31. And the servo's coming up. Anytime you should like. There we go. I'm gonna have to go into the Victron because it's still configured for the battery downstairs. Let's go to the smart shunt. Reset history because that's no longer valid. Go to configuration, battery. Battery voltage is now 12.8, and the capacity is 560. Let's close that. All right, I believe it is set up. So let's go to the servo. So this is all incorrect because I don't have a Quattro or MultiPlus for the 12 volt system, but I don't know how to update that yet. I don't want to delete the devices because they will come back. Okay, the key thing is the, the smart shunt's been updated. Okay. I think we're as good as we can do at this point. I am going to turn off this. The Victron stuff is dead and I'm going to reconnect this. And then this is dead, right? Let me verify. Yep, it's dead. I wonder if there's an inrush current on the battery charger. I'm gonna guess not. I mean, I'm sure it has some capacitors in there, but probably nothing like an inverter. Okay, this should now come alive and I've not booted this since I bought it. And there it is, it's coming alive. So now I should be able to go into Victron Connect, go back. I suddenly smelled something. Might just be dust in this thing. Okay, scan for new products. Maybe I can't see this until this wakes up. That would make sense because it has to see it through the VE Direct. I don't think this is Bluetooth. Don't see other products you are looking to for. All right, well, did this turn off? Is there a switch on it? I saw this turn on briefly. I have voltage on the bus, don't I? 13.30. Why is this not lighting up? You direct. Okay, so now it's off entirely. Okay, it's lit up, you see the lights, and it turns off right away. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Does it only wake up when it's powered by the 120? Okay, so let's turn this off again. Pull this out. I'm going to put a little protective sleeve on there. So this, I mean, it's grounded, but who cares? And now I'm gonna plug that in. Okay, it's lit up. And this time it's staying on. Okay, so I must have to have it plugged into AC for this to be able to come up. So now if I go into here, there it is. Okay, so that was the trick. I had to have it um, 
pair and connect. Oh, it's doing a nice little light show. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Uh, unsecured access. Um, no, I'm going to do all those when it's actually on the boat. Maximum charge current is 30 amps. That's fine. That's what I paid for. Uh, I just need to make sure that the chemistry is set to lithium iron phosphate. Am I staring right at this? Function. Oh, it runs as a power supply. Neat. Not useful right now. Oh, battery settings. There we go. Battery presets. Built-in presets. Lithium ion. There we go. Down there. Now, what they call lithium iron is lithium iron phosphate. Join existing. Alrighty. So now it's Bluetooth to connecting to things as well. So now if I come back here, voltage 14.2, uh, 3.55. Okay, Google, 3.55 times four. The answer is 14.2. 14.2. Perfect. That's what I want. State is closed. Current is zero amps. History, nothing. All right. I'm going to call that configured. So what I am going to do now is this is still energized, isn't it? Uh, no, it's off. Okay, if that's off, then that means I can reconnect this. There we go. That's connected. Let's turn this back on. And now this should see the battery. But I don't want it to charge right now. It's probably going to start to... It's in absorption, it's saying. Active cycles, status. Yeah, it's pushing 30 amps. I don't want that. Okay, I'm just going to unplug this for now because I don't want that charging. And that completely shut down. Okay, so no AC, no that. Understood. Okay, so now I know that is working. I just have to plug this in. Spiritals, let us go back to getting the other battery up. So I am going to turn this one off because this is gonna to try to dump charge, whichever one's high is gonna dump charge into the other. Did I tighten that up properly? Yep. So now, We'll go into the BMS. Oh, no, I haven't turned the BMS on yet. Let's turn the other one on. That one. So, like we learned last time, set lithium iron phosphate first. Then we're going to set that to four. We're going to set that to 280. Uh, oh, calibrated voltage. 13.31. I think it's at a bad angle. You probably can't see that, but it's very, 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 very close to this one. So there won't be a lot of current transfer between them when we turn them on. 13.31. We're going to set the recover to, I'm going to set the recover to 4.5. I think I did this. Oh, I should know better. Oh, right. Cause I have to send that one first. Then I can send that one. Under voltage protection, 2.6. That's fine. And recovery is 2.65. That's fine. Um, Continuous, continuous charge. It's a 200 amp BMS. Oh yeah, the temperature. Recovery is going to be 5C. Shutdown is going to be 3C. Is there anything else I'm forgetting to set? Oh, I'm sure if I'm forgetting something, someone will tell me. That's why I like you guys. You, you cross check me. Now we're going to go into controls. Let's turn this one on. I should have no volts, turn on charge, turn on discharge. This should now be 13.31 volts. This is showing 0.2 or 13.32. This is showing 13.3. Okay, I'm going to make sure you can actually see what's going on here with the screens. And I am, that one's on. Let's connect this one. And these two should start balancing. <laughs> Virtually nothing. Okay, we, oh, no, 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 no. I almost forgot something. Rename it, modify name, and this is going to be 12VBMS01. There's the two BMSs. You know what? For giggles, let's, uh, let's turn on the charger. Oh, there it goes. It's charging. 14 and 14. I might as well let them charge up. I mean, they're going to be pretty close to full anyway, but that'll... Mm, do I want to do this now or do I want to do this after they're on the boat? No, I want to do this now because if the batteries are going to swell it all from the full charge, I want that before I build the box. So, ha, huh, the 12 volt system is alive. So with the drink in hand, the battery's charging behind me. I finally got over the hump and finished the 12 volt system. I mean, finished it. Obviously I need a box and I need a box quick 
because I'm leaving. It's currently Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know what day it is, but in any case, uh, it's Tuesday. I'm leaving Saturday or Sunday morning. So th this has to be ready to put in the boat. <laughs> oh boy. I don't really know how to close this. This has already been a long video and it's rambling. I think the two biggest takeaways from this little 12 volt project, little 12 volt project is one, after you finish a huge project that's part of a bigger project, hitting that slump, it's really, you have to be really conscious and push yourself back out of it. At least I do. And maybe you don't, but I do. I, that was a real slog to get myself back on track building this 12 volt. Once I actually got into it, it was good again. The other one, I think that really impacted this was I was really scared to turn this on after how I screwed up downstairs. Even though there was no connection between the buck converter blowing up and what I'm building here, I just got the fear. And it's kind of hard to shake the fear. I, I think those are my two biggest takeaways from this video. I, I, you're not here for philosophy, so take it as you will, but that's what I'm taking from this. The 12 volts alive and uh, I got a lot to do. <laughs> I'm the Digital Mermaid. Thank you guys very much for bearing with me. I'll, uh, I'll see you soon.